The Jay Michaels Show. The movie is called Vampire. And I have with me today as my guest, Zoe Wassman and Malachi Sekuya. And we're going to be talking about this new film that's coming up. Hello, Zoe and Malachi. How you doing? Good, good. We're just excited to talk about the movie. So, you know, it's all we think about. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. 24-7, you've got a, a rabid vampire deer on your mind. <laughs> there are worse things, there, right? <laughs> there are worse things, absolutely. Well, okay, uh, Zoe, and uh, you're the producer. Um, let me just ask you, if you will, to sort of give us a summary of what this movie is about. Yeah, totally. So, you know, actually, uh, Path Films is my production company, and we produced this um, alongside Pop Motion Pictures. Uh, so we've actually got two really awesome, totally Eugene local production companies. Uh, the other one is run by Taylor Morton, our director for Vampire, um, and also his partner, Emily Clare. And we represent Path Films, myself and Malachi. Um, and our movie is a completely insane idea. But it's mm -hmm. one that we were really excited about from day one. And the essence of our story was, what if vampires didn't just turn into vampire bats? What if mm -hmm. they could turn into any fanged animal? And so we had found out that there really is a species of fanged deer called the musk deer. And we thought, well, wouldn't that be a great Pacific Northwest cryptid? Instead of your traditional vampire bat vampire, we're going with a vampire, and it's a fanged deer uh, shapeshifter mm. that we've kind of created. And our story is just a very campy 90s film that really encompasses that kind of theme and holds it really well um, with this feeling of, you know, discovering what's in your own woods, what's in your backyard, and uh, all the things that you wouldn't quite expect that you're going to find out there. And it's, it's kind of an unknown cryptid also. Totally. It's yeah. totally brand new. So we actually, you know, we invented the vampire um, and we hope that, you know, someday it'll be up there with Sasquatch and all the others. But for now, like we just really wanted to create something that was representative of, you know, where we have uh, created this movie, the Pacific Northwest. Um, and just as like we really wrote vampire as a love letter to the woods, to nature. Um, and we've really leaned into that, like, you know, what happens when you're confronted by nature and you're mm -hmm. unprepared? Because a lot of people nowadays in the society that we're living in, we're quite separated from nature. Exactly. And so, like, when you bridge that gap, you know, and you're unprepared, what happens? Exactly. What might you find that you weren't, that you never planned for and really couldn't have? But that's really, like, the, the root of the horror in our story is uh, what's really out there in your woods and what you're really going to have to go through to find it. And it's kind of a play on Bambi and vampire, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, totally. And we um, we originally wrote the concept just about these um, musk deer that could turn into vampires. And we were calling it deer pyre for like half a year. Um, and then we realized that it really fit in well with the themes of Bambi and um, with um, Bambi becoming like a public open source property. Um, we thought we thought about what could add to our piece if we did lean into the reference to Bambi mm -hmm. and it ended up fitting really well with what we had already developed from deer pyre. And so, um, it really kind of educated and elevated the film actually to be just even more intricate. And, um, the two things fit together so well. So like one example of this is we had set out to make a low budget horror film. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had some really, violent dangerous stunts and really big explosive moments in the script that we knew we didn't have the budget for um and we were kind of just playing with what ways we could um achieve those if we were going to have to do like a sort of like a take the shit out of it silly version of like this is the gore but you can tell it's fake but we're doing it in a self-aware way mm. um we played with all these options and what we came with what what Bambi helped bring us is this option to do partially animated sequences and to do live action shots, but then with an animated animal coming through and interacting with the live action actors on screen. And it, it really melded into this very like 90s, very like using cartoon animation um, sort of piece that that it until we found Bambi, we didn't we didn't put all that together. 
Yeah, you're also using uh, the found footage, the Blair Witch type style, right, as well? Oh, absolutely. Like that was, you know, the Blair Witch Project, um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Mm. You know, some of these movies that were coming out in the 90s and made these choices for very similar reasons to why, why we did. CGI wasn't good enough then to give the, you know, the impact that would have been needed for Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And when it comes to the Blair Witch Project, that movie was so low budget and it was created mm -hmm. with such a zeitgeist around it because nobody knew what had really happened on the set because there were only a handful of people there. Um, there was a real like a lot of the movies that we used as a reference made the decisions that they did for the same reasons that we chose to go half cartoon and found footage. It was to be able to create a product that felt really high quality, but with almost no resources behind us. And, you know, I have to just, like, give a shout out to our local film community because really the fact that everybody stepped up and just, you know, saw this crazy thing and thought, man, I want to help bring this to life and really believed in it, you know, even though there was a lot of uh, questions about how we were going to get it done and how we were going to achieve these large scale stunts and gore effects and, 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 you know, mm -hmm. every single element of this piece felt at the beginning, like, how do we, how do we accomplish this at all? And the fact that over time we allowed this piece to grow and change and evolve using these references uh, from the time period that we were trying to recreate, um, we ended up really making something that tells the story even better than we originally imagined. Um, and it was really like, you know, just brought this like real spirit to it from from the 90s, you know, and, and for the same reasons that a lot of those uh, choices were made back then, we were able to kind of, you know, take inspiration from those source materials and then adapt and make our own solution so that mm -hmm. vampire could be what it is today. And you also have a, a lot of big name actors that have come to support this project and are even in the project, right? Drop a few names for me. Yes, sir. Um, so in working with Taylor Morden and all his expertise, we were able to just cast a really wide net and see what celebrities got excited by vampire when we showed it to them. Um, and we were able to get some pretty amazing, iconic people. We have um, we have Diane Franklin uh, from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. She's one of the two original princesses. Mm -hmm. um, she acts in our film. We also have Greg Sestero from The Room, cult classically um, just heralded film. And um, that one is probably the craziest little intricacy because like we... We did build Vampire around some cult classic references that we were like, oh, you know, even if nobody sees us for 10 years, we'd love to be someday brought up in the same uh, with the same view as, you know, as these cult classics like Sleepaway Camp or like the Blair Witch Project that just started really small and spread through word of mouth um, or like the room. Uh, and so, yeah, we got freaking Mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> we got Greg Sestero and then. Um, we also got Lloyd Kaufman, which was uh, really humbling. Just yeah. sort of like a tip wow. of the hat from yeah. from so much, you know, the the people who came before and who have been kind of carrying the torch of making these independent horror films. You know, exactly. Like they're all in their own right. They all have this, you know, foothold in independent film. Like that's where a lot of them started. And it was really cool to have these people kind of come out of the woodwork and say, you know, this is where I came from. I started just like you. You know, let me come and help make your project, you know, just that much better than maybe, you know, like I, maybe I wish someone who had, had come and done that for me. And I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of that energy really was brought to vampire. And I feel really fortunate that we were able to work with people who were not only just so wonderful and showed up, but also have this background, you know, in coming from where we've started and they were very encouraging. Um, just as, you know, just wonderful humans, you know, just really, really wonderful people right. to work with. And uh, we feel really honored that they showed up to work on Vampire with us. Absolutely, yes. And the, the film itself, it's, it's comedy horror. Uh, what will it be rated? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's definitely, there's a lot of, like, nudity, uh, swear words, drug use, violence in it. It's very much like a typical horror film in that sense where it gives you everything you would hope for you know from that genre um and so we might you know ultimately not get an official rating because you have to pay for that um yes yeah, so technically it would be unrated mm -hmm. but if it was to be given a rated it would definitely be at least an r yeah 
<laughs> well, naturally, I mean, you got to have lots of blood, lots of gore, and a lot of screaming, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the bare minimums, yeah. Yeah, the bare minimum right. of screaming, at least. <laughs> so, Malachi, you are the lead actor in the film. Uh, tell me about your role and getting prepared for it and what all you do in the movie. Okay, so um, Vampire has a very, like, ensemble-based cast where, like, um, you know, probably six characters are all given the spotlight as, like, the main characters, and they are this group of community college students who get brought into the wilderness on a field trip with their biology professor. Mm -hmm. um, so my character is sort of the, uh, I guess, of, of that little group um, of college kids that gets taken camping. He's he's the closest one to being like the jock, mm -hmm. um, and he's also definitely like the bad boy. Where he's got this, um, he's got like this big diamond earring, and he's not going to school. He's just selling drugs, and like he goes there because he's kind of dating one of the girls, but um, he isn't willing to actually date her. And he brings a gun camping, and he's just kind of like very my character. He's very like probably the least the most out of place is how i see him like uh mm -hmm. these are a bunch of really kind of like good kids and he is actually maybe not as bad as he thinks he is uh, of like the, the bad guy but he um he does have that like chip on his shoulder and he's bringing that kind of attitude of like no one's gonna care about me and i don't get what i deserve um and so i'm just gonna like you know take that out on the world i think that's mm -hmm. his attitude um and it's fun because throughout the script, he gets humbled in a lot of really fun, horrific ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Zoe, if you will, tell me a little about this ensemble cast, who all is in it, and uh, a little about their characters. Yeah, so um, one of the, you know, we actually cast uh, nationwide. So mm -hmm. we have a couple local actors from Portland. Um Jeff Brosey is one of the first uh, names I'll bring up. He was actually in Animal House, which is like a Eugene local kind of our claim to fame uh, mm -hmm. until Vampire, of course. Um, <laughs> so Jeff Brosey is amazing. He's got uh, just a really big list of things that he's uh, been in, uh, mostly independent work, but he's been just really getting out there and doing a lot of modeling as well. And he's just an incredible actor. Like he really brought the um, manic professor energy that we needed while keeping this really grounded, really beautiful performance that I think would remind a lot of people of like Chevy Chase in his early days, uh, you know, going on his family vacations and that kind of a thing where he's just a really lovable, like he brought a really lovable essence and uh, a really like kind of wily professor energy, but while really maintaining that authenticity and making you feel like this is a real person who would make these choices in a motivated way uh, to do this crazy field trip with his students. Um, so Jeff Brosey is one of the first uh, people that we um, ultimately had even looked at for Professor Charlie, one of our lead characters. We also have a child actor from Portland who is mm -hmm. eight years old. Mm -hmm. His name's Weston Oliver. And we are actually his first feature film, which I just feel so honored because this kid's a rock star. And he's been actually like since working on our set, just booking like campaigns in L.A. Um, he's been working on other feature films and just like according to his mom, who was just an amazing support and just amazing person to have on that with us. Uh, that this project is really just like lit a fire for him. And he's just really gone on to want to create more artwork. Um, obviously, Malachi is also one of our like local actors. Um, another kind of close by human that we got out of Olympia, Katie Gibbons, who is incredibly talented. And she really brought this like very grounded and um, I would almost say like carefree to this role where you really wouldn't have anticipated that's that's what you would be getting. Mm -hmm. um, and so she kind of plays this like hippie uh, wanderer of the woods, uh, you know, wanting to protect nature, but still just being, um, you know, trying to find her path into how she's going to do that. Um, so she plays one of our lead ensemble members. We also have uh, the wonderful and brilliant Melody Para, who plays Nanda, who is Branson's love interest. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's kind of like an overachiever uh, and just really wants to impress this professor and also like Maybe he kind of wants, you know, to impress this guy right over here. But in reality, um, maybe is still battling with why she's even pursuing 
somebody who is like Branson. So mm -hmm. she's got a lot of internal struggle, a couple different love interests, and definitely a lot of baggage to figure out. Right. Um, and then we've also got uh, Paul Addison, who plays another college student. Um, and he's actually the one who manipulates that footage camera, the in-world camera that we use. Um, and he's really also kind of in his first look for a path, but doesn't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. And sees this opportunity to observe people not in their natural habitat, to maybe understand a little bit more and gain a bigger perspective about the world. So that's why he kind of goes on this field trip, uh, despite it being very different than his, like, you know, investigative journalism major that he's going for in college. Um, and then lastly, we've got the Buckleys, which is a family that uh, discovers the initial evidence that leads them to this specific place in the woods uh, to look for the musk deer. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, uh, the oldest son is played by Jacob Rail, who's one of our another one of our lead ensemble members. Um, and he plays a character called Tanner, uh, who is homeschooled, you know, still lives in the woods primarily alone with his father and his little brother, who is uh, Nathan or Weston Oliver's character. Um, and just really also, you know, they're they're all a kind of a bunch of aimless people, like early on early in their young lives, still trying to figure out what's important to them and what direction they want to go. And I think his character is a really good representation of that as well. So he has this more of a connection with the land that they are uh, currently like investigating and exploring and trying to find evidence of the musk deer on. But at the same time, like he was raised with the values of his father, um, who is ultimately a hunter and mm -hmm. not a, you know, not a negative thing at all, in my opinion, but it's just one of those things that really informs a lot of their decisions is this is their hunting ground as well, uh, that they're all being, uh, preyed upon right <laughs> so it's a it's an interesting relationship that you really develop with the buckleys and that this is their land um so that's like just a little something about our lead ensemble uh that really makes up the primary uh cast of characters besides the father buckley figure who's played by uh levy duple and he's just an amazing very fun just a very like definitely get, brings that dad energy of like mm -hmm. just got my kids out in the woods gonna go do this crazy thing but like I trust this guy here, the professor, to, to take care of all these people. So he's got a very, like, fatherly energy about him. Um, and he's also represented as a war veteran. And so he's got this kind of this past that also informs the way that he, like, treats his sons um, and also the other folks in, in this uh, scenario. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of depth to these characters. And they're all very personal for me. A lot of them have, like, a little piece of myself in them for sure. It sounds like it's going to be a fun movie and a really nice, like, throwback to a 90s gore, you know, horror movie. I, I think it's going to be wonderful. You are, for the most part, were you crowdsourcing uh, this, the, to fund the film? Yeah, so we um, we invested all that we could on our own, uh, and we self-funded. Uh, the majority of our budget so far has been self-funded, um, and that all that money was used just for production to hire the actors mostly um, and get various sets and props and stuff too. But a lot of what we paid is just to bring the actors in. Um, and we, we knew we were only going to be able to raise, you know, like under 50,000 and be able to put that together on our own. And then from there on, we, we took this approach of like, Hey, if, if we build it and we show how good some of these shots look and how good, some of the auditions are we start to really give people an image of what this film is going to be now that we've shot it. Mm -hmm. That's the time when we could maybe ask, Hey, like if you really want to see this, get on board and, and help us pay to finish it. Um, and it's, it's a bit of a different approach. A lot of Indiegogo's will fund horror films before they've even been shot. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've shot all of principal produ production and um, then brought it to the crowdfunding platform to try and just really spark excitement and show um, all of our future fans just how awesome this thing is going to be. And um, so far, it was a really risky choice to do it that way. No, we hadn't seen a lot of other films go that path, but it's it's what we knew we had to offer that we could make mm -hmm. a quality piece. Um, and you know, we don't have like a huge social media following, so that what we didn't have the option of like just funding it beforehand um mm -hmm. so yeah we self-funded we shot this film there's a couple of inserts and pickups left to shoot like a band driving past the screen some things like that that we need to put like a little bit of money into just to get a, a film squad out but 99 percent of the 
um, well, what's needed to finish Vampire is post-production jobs like editing, um, the animation, the sound design and scoring of the film mm-hmm. are going to be really huge. And then even things like a color grade where like it's it's money we don't have to to pay a, a color grade artist. And we uh, um, <laughs> the footage mm-hmm. and the performances are so good that we They're just beautiful. know that. Yeah. We don't want to short it at the color grade stage. We like right. we want to finish strong. Yeah, so it's like the, you don't realize it's not there until you see it done poorly. You right. know, it's like you really want to make sure that we give this the polish it deserves. So you have ninety nine percent of the film is done. Some people yeah. have already seen it. Um, how would someone go about giving you the additional money you need to complete and get this film ready? So. Actually, no one's seen Vampire. Oh. Um, ultimately, we've got this wonderful archive of footage, right? And we still have to do all of those pieces that Malachi was just talking about to sew all of that footage together, to make it sound beautiful, to make it look beautiful, to make it this complete product, right? So if you're interested in seeing Vampire just fully come to fruition in the most beautiful and magical way possible, then you can actually donate to our crowdfunding campaign at www vampiremovie.com. And right now we do have a stretch goal announced of $50,000. So that's where we're trying to head right now and raise to finish this film. But we do have our initial goal met of $25,000. So a lot of people have already stepped up and donated and said, yes, I'll watch it. Um, And really like taking the guesswork out of it for us, because that is something that a lot of independent filmmakers really don't have, that a lot of these larger studios just inherently do have, Mm -hmm. is a following. So, you know, when we're making something and we're setting out at step one, we don't know if there's an audience for that movie. And that's why a lot of Indiegogo's choose to raise the money first. Mm -hmm. For us, we knew that we were making a movie that we wanted to see Mm -hmm. and that we would make it no matter what level it was made at. And meeting Taylor Morton, having him step in and provide all of the expertise that he has really brought Vampire up to that next level. And that's where we're at right now is that we have actually completed this thing at a much higher level production value than anything else than we've seen personally come out of our filmmaking community in a really long time. And so if we can take this and nurture all that energy that our filmmaking community has put into this project, all this love Mm -hmm. that they've really, that they've really, you know, given vampire and elevated it to where it could be. Now we feel like, well, isn't it our job to make sure that all of that effort goes seen Mm -hmm. and rewarded and so this, the next $25,000 is not just get it done, get it out there. It's mm-hmm. stuff like film festivals. It's stuff like a theatrical release. Right. You know, it's, there's that a level. That's going to be that, my next question is what is your goal for where the movie, when finished, where is it going to end up? That's what we still have to figure out. Yeah. We would really <laughs> love to say that we've got, you know, a pathway out. But what we do know is we want Vampire to be seen by as many people as possible. And so we can complete this product and get it out there, you know, show the world. Like, we really believe that our audience exists Mm -hmm. and that they're going to step up and support it once they see it, too. But really, like, we also think we're making a beautiful enough product that we could get it on one of the major streaming platforms or even get it distributed by someone that we've all heard of, you know? Such as Um, Netflix or something (laughs) like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and we do have that as an option. But our goal is really to just make sure that as many people who get to see Vampire as possible and then it gets out there to them first. Mm -hmm. And like if that, you know, if if they can help us make this thing, you know, um, seen and known and give it a little more notoriety, that's just going to help us, you know, get it out there to more and more people. So that's really our goal right now. Well, to quote a 90s film, if you build it, they will come. So that's what I always can say. get all of this. Yes, Let's that's go. I said. That's yeah. my attitude as an artist. It's like you mm-hmm. just got to keep getting better and eventually you'll become relevant to people if you're good enough at your at your craft. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And but I do want to mention I want to talk on it for a second because it's being at this place where we've completed such a high quality film. And then, um, you know, we don't know what the distribution options will be for us. Mm-hmm. It's a very scary moment. Like we've bet not only you know, all of our savings, but we've bet like two years worth of our work on this thing. And, you know, the bet, the riskiness of it actually paid off better than we ever could have hoped for. But now we have this little refined project, you know, this little piece that when we give it to the world, 
you know, it could be not ours anymore. We could give it up. If we right. made a bad deal for the distribution of it, it, we could give it up and then never hardly see any money from it and, and lose creative control of it completely. So that's like the furthest from what we want. Yeah. Um, we right. really, we would love the support to release this thing in an entirely independent way. If if we can get the eyes on it, um, our local city, Eugene, has a really great, like art community where people are always going out to events and um, we know we can do uh, a, the premiere here. We know that there's some local theaters that will let us mm -hmm. uh, run vampire for, you know, I think at least a month um, at the end of this year. We also know that we're going to give digital access as well as Blu-rays to um, all of our crowdfunding people first. So, that's the the surefire way to get vampire right now is just to go find our Indiegogo and get either a Blu-ray or a digital download. And that will be the first option to see it along with the local premiere in Eugene. And there's and also that, an option where you, if you help fund it, you can be in the credits of the movie itself. Yeah, there's absolutely for any of the folks out there who are just really looking to support independent filmmaking or want to credit on your own IMDb as an artist vampire is going to be beautiful it's going to be impactful and we really believe that it's going to be a hell of a piece of art so mm -hmm. you know on our indiegogo we've got associate producer credits as well as executive producer credits mm -hmm. that could be a very meaningful credit in the future as an independent filmmaker um, because we really do have quite a few names in this film that are up far beyond the level that we're at personally, like Greg Sestero, like Diane Franklin, um, but even like our director, Taylor Morton, who's really gone out and made a name for himself um, in documentary filmmaking. You know, there's, there's some real talent behind this project, not only in our big names, but just for all those folks out there who have been behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. This movie was made by people who love vampire. Right. And I know that anyone who has tried to make a project out there knows how difficult it is when you don't have every single person on that set pulling mm -hmm. for that piece of artwork to turn out the best that it can. And in our case, where we had very little money, very little resources, and very little time to accomplish these goals, we had so much love and support pulled, like poured into it by the folks who did work on it. And that is such a big reason why we have this gem that we are asking for help to polish. Like we wouldn't be out here asking people for, you know, to donate their, their money to this project. If we didn't believe that we were going to take something that's already so gorgeous mm -hmm. and make it something that's really worth people's time, you know, to go and invest in, you know, we're, we really are. I feel polishing a gem out here. You know, we're not just still, still out there mining rocks. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> right. Well, I kind of know what you're up against. I'm a documentary film producer, and I last year I had one of my films in a theater here in Texas, and it was such a joy to walk in there. I did a QA and a afterwards, but it was such a joy to walk in there and look at my film up on a big screen and, and, and think to myself, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> yeah, serious. That moment is so impactful. Mm -hmm. It's such a privilege. It is such a privilege that we are getting to do what we do right now. And I have to say... At Path Films, for this project and for any project in the future, you know, man, I came from a really small town, and there's a lot of artists in my town that are never going to get in front of a cinema camera. A lot of actors who will never even get on a big stage because there isn't one where they live. Right. And in our case, it is such a privilege for all of these artists, for the people even getting to hold those cameras to set up the lights in reality to work with that level of gear, mm -hmm. that... You just can't forget it. You know, too many resources get poured into projects like this to forget how lucky we are to get to, to do them. Right. So, I mean, that moment of just seeing your work come to life and having so many people just there just to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that is fantastic. Well, Zoe and Malachi, thank you so much for being my guest and telling me all about Vampire because I can't wait now. I got to go see this thing when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> www.vampiremovie.com, man. I will be there, and thank you very much. Awesome. We will see you next time on The J. Michael Show. Goodbye.